Look out, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I am your host, an extremely tired yet extremely happy Alex Donnelly. Joined also by someone who's extremely tired, might not be super happy, but has done stage dives over the weekend in the bomber jacket, which is denim this week, Bryony Dawson. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here. <laughs> Something's happened to my microphone as well. I'm doing a bit of a lean-in, little like a little cowboy. It looks great good. to be here, everybody. It's really... <laughs> Great to be here. I like it. And over there is the little fella. He's Whoa. really happy. He's probably tired because he hasn't had his bottle. It's the stats guy. <laughs> how, have we, how have we started that? That is that is outrageous. You, the Swans win one game. The Swans win one game and he's all up and about for one. So there we go. It's also Melbourne Cup Week stats. Guy. Melbourne Cup Week like, as well. This is like Christmas for me, but I'm not <laughs> sleeping. You're working an amazing amount of shifts at the moment. I certainly am. Point a few of rep- stage dives. A few stage dives, but also free-to-air TV star. Channel 9 interviewed by Yelena Dokic. How did good it, was that? Oh, yeah. Didn't yeah. mention the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise. Yeah. Got a QR code. The podcast, the podcast was the last thing yeah, I know. on my mind uh, <laughs> with live television on Channel 9. There was a lot going on there. There was a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, pomade or gel in the hair. There was a. Yeah, there's a lot. Was I don't know lot. what he puts in, in it. My yeah. hair and makeup artist, who I've had for a very long time, who's the weirdest person you'll ever really? meet That's... on the face of the earth. <laughs> I love um, that. Yeah, I don't know what though. he puts in it. He just does this and he makes me listen to it. And uh, then he, he makes you listen to it. <laughs> I'm getting a haircut in five and a half hours, so mine will be the same. Yeah. Yeah. My barber watches the show, so it might be on the big screen when we get there. Thanks, Barb. Shout out to the Valiant Barbers. Go check them <laughs> no out. Free, no free if points. you're in Melbourne, go check them out. It's 50 bucks for a sick fade. How are we doing plugs for, for 50 <laughs> bucks for a sick fade? Baba, yeah. That's yeah, never has a more <laughs> whiter thing than said on this show. <sighs> A Did you get your moustache going as well? Fade. No, the moustache stays. Smoother than a fresh dress, Skippy. Hey. <laughs> I'm being attacked for who I am and I don't like hey, it. I got attacked. No, no, no. <laughs> Bring your authentic self to work yeah. today, folks. I was about to say, yes, me, the middle-aged white guy is the one that's been hated on, yes. right? Yeah. That seems fair. Mm. There's a lot of jokes to make there at the moment. What anyway. a start. Yeah. Uh, so this is the review show. So Home and Away season is done. Before we rip in, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you give us a the, hit the notifications button so anytime we drop some content, you get notified. You can come watch what we're doing, of course. All across the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. It's AFLW Today, AFLW Today AU on X. It's where all the good stuff's happening because we have finals. Because you know what's good about footy? Finals footy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe the home and away season is over. I, I feel like only yesterday we were coming in doing for our promo. first preview show, doing the promo. That was not long. Yeah, know. that felt like. Your hair was ago. much longer. Was it? Yeah. Was it? Was it? Oh. Check out the promo videos and photos. Oh, yeah, yeah. actually, because he used There's a bit those. more volume. Yeah, there was a bit. It just got too long. Every time, every year, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to grow it. I'm going to see what I can do with it. And then I get halfway through, I'm like, no, nah, nah. absolutely. I get to get five weeks, I'm like, I need a haircut. Yeah, and my partner's a hairdresser. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like, hey, Dal. <laughs> Your partner does rule in fairness. She did come hang out one day. Yeah, yeah. She's nice. awesome. All right, uh, we probably actually need to talk about the footy because <laughs> absolutely you know, not. We had, some point. we had nine games of footy over the weekend. The finals were shaped. Yes, tipping contest wasn't won. It was a draw, so no one wins between you two. Oh, we'll take a draw. Woo! Do, woo! Wait, wait. Equal first. Yeah, last. Uh, Brian's right. favorite team, Richmond, let me down for a perfect round in the final round. So that was awesome. Hey. Thanks, thanks to uh, Richmond for panicking with the football in their hands. But we'll get to that <laughs> later because we need a quick look. Yes, quick look from the weekend is. Second consecutive year, we have a tie in the leading goal kickers with Maloney and Smith. 21 goals each. If the Brisbane euro game was an extra seven seconds yeah. long, Smith would have had a kick to win it. it she would have. After and, the siren, yeah. Looks filthy. if Maloney caught any kind of break in front of goal oh, on the week, true. she just oh. could not get it. Couldn't get it. First game all year that she... Just couldn't get anywhere near it because she's been their best player yeah. by an absolute a mile. It's I almost like yeah. Adelaide of good defence. I know yes, it's good well, defence, but then she just got unlucky as well. Let's start. It? Yeah, Bedell was incredible yeah. in defence and is the reason why Maloney has not won the leading goal kicker on her own. Twenty-one goals each. Yeah. Good, good season. Though. Well done. Yeah. How have I not mentioned? Just this triggered me. And Hatchard's coming on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Hatchie, Let's very go. excited. Really should have mentioned that off the top. So, um, sure, Ann Hatchard's coming up basically after we do the quick look before we get into all the games because, well, the Adelaide Crows media people are awesome. Yep. Like, love working with them. Very right. easy to very communicate helpful. with. Yep. Gave us Jess Waterhouse at the start of the season and now Ann Hatchard's here and Beautiful. she'll have to answer Bryony's weird and awesome question, which yes. my answer to is Ann. <laughs> anyway, keep on with the quick look. Hawks take out the McClellan Trophy, which is basically the combined points totals of the men's and the women's programs. They get a million bucks for doing so. Yeah. 
feels kind of a stitch up that the Brisbane Lions, who won the men's premiership, are current holders of the W premiership, don't win the million. If you look at the draws both teams have had, yeah, Brisbane's was much tougher. That's not how the McClellan that's trophy works. It, it yeah, feels, man. yeah, but this it goes back to the equalization of the competition. If you played all 17 rounds against every, or 18 rounds against every team, I think Brisbane win it. I think Brisbane ha- Brisbane fans have a right to complain about not getting the million bucks. Oh, I think you're having a problem to have a problem. Yeah. yeah, that's true. The other one is pretty funny. As a North fan, obviously the North women's team, yeah. awesome. The men's team, huh, very bad. But we, we almost made in the top eight. Did like, you? We're just out of the top eight for the McLaren trophy, but then 17th in the I'm men's. So the swan, women are absolutely I'm assuming the Swans us. are like seventh because they yeah. were good and bad. Yeah, so the, yeah, pretty good. So, yeah, pretty good yeah, Hawthorne, Brisbane, good. So actually, million probably... Bucks. Uh, Yata Pulte would have been up there as well because obviously mm. they had a good men's season. They've had a pretty decent W season as well. Yep. Finals fixture is in as well. So the top eight was set. Uh, it got set basically when Essendon won on Saturday night, but then obviously you had to have your little matchup change around with Hawthorne potentially uh, could have gone down a third. If Richmond won, they could have jumped up. Port and there's as percentages well, everywhere. Game. Yep. So currently, Friday night, first yes. versus fourth, you have North Melbourne taking on Kiwana, who will be the Adelaide Crows of this week with Indigenous round ending. Shout out to the guy that got in our mentions on TikTok. He was like, why are they doing it over two weeks for the women? What a joke. Because they did it for two weeks in the men's, you yes, moron. Yes, they did, actually. You. I forgot about that. Saturday. 7 p.m. So prime time Saturday night. This is actually fantastic fixturing by the AFL. Oh, he loves a good fixture chat. Yeah. No, I, I do enjoy this one because <laughs> it's it's obviously Melbourne Cup week, so it's very busy. A lot of eyeballs are going to be on Channel Seven with the races that are on in Sydney. Also, Channel Nine has the uh, the Cup. rights for the Melbourne Cup mm-hmm. here in Australia. So yep. Channel Nine and Channel Seven, a lot of attention is going to be on the racing. Yeah. 7 p.m. Clear yeah, I don't mind that. Yep. I like it. Good mm-hmm. idea. Four o'clock over in Perth, seven o'clock here over in uh, Victoria. Sunday, 1.05 p.m. at Icon Park. Hawthorne take on the Brisbane Lions. Don't know how I feel That's about gonna that. That's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And then to finish it off at 3.05 p.m., so straight after it, Albertson Oval, Yata Pulte take on Richmond in an elimination final. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. My only knock on this whole fixture is first and second, do their job. They get the advantage of guaranteeing themselves two home finals. Mm. Oh, I'm just getting a note here. North Melbourne and Hawthorne have compl- have played a combined one game at Icon Park this season. Great home advantage, guys. Good process. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. A, it is a weird process. I'll give you that. It's for the crowd. It's, it's for, for the, the crowd. crowd. They have. They can. At Arden Street, you can't fit that many people. No. So at least you can fit more people at Icon Park. Like I know it's for the crowd, yeah. but I'm just saying, you know. I know what you're saying. It's a good ground. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. North know how to win there other than the grand final, obviously, but yeah, yeah. it'll be right. Yeah. I've, uh, Hawthorne haven't played there and North belted Carlton by about a million points. So it's not much of a thing. I'll be there like, Friday night. It'll be awesome. I'm going to go as well. Yeah. Yeah. we're going. I went to Arden Street on uh, the weekend. Yeah. It's, it's good. good. We'll talk about that later. Yep. Uh, some injuries. Bonnie Toogood, unfortunately, oh. went down early in the win over Carlton. I, from the way she went down and yeah. how it looked. She, look too good, right? They're going to do everything to play her, but oh, I don't think she'll. Yeah. If she does, she'll be one out in the goal square. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. And we saw her after she came back from her knee injury as well. It took her a couple of games to. Yeah, like, it took her to last week. Yeah, to warm up and get back into it. So you'd kind of think if there's any kind of niggle, you just sit her out. Yeah. I reckon yeah. they. She might oh, they're going to risk wheel, her. wheel me out. Just yeah. wheel, wheel me out because oh. I am the heart and soul of this Essendon team, yeah. which I think she is. Um, if she doesn't play, and then Steph Wales might still be out as well. Mm. Like, yeah. I'm not sure, sure she is out. There's your, your ruck, and then one of your best players both out for the Bombers. And you go yeah. to Perth. That's a yeah, that's brutal. Uh, yeah. Soph Conway went down in an awkward tackle yesterday yeah. with the shoulder, the tweaky, the AC joint. Yeah, uh, we don't know. I mean, it hasn't come out yet. Yeah, yeah. So this we're doing this Monday morning. So really hard to get information, but. Mm-hmm. They've got a double chance. If there's any risk, they probably rest her, but this is probably your biggest X factor of a player. If she's fine, she's playing. Yeah, oh, 100%. If there's any chance that she can get in there, they'll yeah. absolutely play her. She's had an incredible season. She's always been great, Yeah. Um, but she's really had an incredible season this year. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, before you move on, I need to talk about yeah, go. people retiring and not tell us they're retiring. It's a bit yeah. weird. Like, this is great. I don't know, Ree, what was going She said in the middle of the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got Ree Ward on the headset, just pure fluke that she's on the bench and, I don't know, the Fox footy people are like, Ree, you want to come have a chat out of the game? Go, yeah, right. That eh? does get organized pre-game. Does just it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I honestly didn't know. Yeah. Okay. And then so they're like, oh, yeah, how's the game going? Yep. Yeah. If you make finals, you know, it should be good. Oh, we're just out here to have some fun today. Finish the season on a high. If we make finals, we make finals. Blah, blah, blah. I'm winding up this season. What? <laughs> yeah. 
Who Ray, says it in the Ray middle what, of the game? What? That's so, that's <laughs> so funny. And I Steph Dredge as well. She's oh, the she's like legend. inaugural yeah. player. Yeah. Like I was a bit of mush on the weekend. Like yeah. all these uh, inaugural players are starting <laughs> yeah, to retire, and mm. you know I'm just like, <sighs> it, it doesn't feel like the uh, FIW like started that long ago. Yeah, but you, you can tell why all these players they're like, yeah. in like 30 or 33 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, retiring. yeah. And it's sad because yeah. they're, they're like the legends that started it all. Yeah, and absolutely. All retiring, right? yeah. yeah, we're now at that stage where like it's the the game's evolving and it's we've gotten past the inaugural. I know the it's parents sad. of the game. It's yeah. like everyone's looking up at their mum, their footy yeah. mum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh yeah what well, we and you had we had some lovely moments throughout the weekend as well with like Brooke Lachlan kicks the first oh, goal yeah. for the Swans in her that? final game and had the last kick of the game yeah that's at least she'd already kicked a goal as well yeah um uh, from Collingwood I've uh, forgotten absolutely spaced her name the defender went uh, forward yeah, yeah uh, went Stacey forward Livingston. Stacey yeah. went yes. forward kicked her kicked her first goal of her career yeah. this year as well so yeah. I had some lovely lovely footy moments yeah right? it was it was footy. Yep. Heartwarming moments. Yes. We love it. All right, quickly, ladder check. I've already talked about the top eight, but North Melbourne, well, hey, our percentage is below 300. We're getting that above it. <laughs> yep. Decided to absolutely pump the Gold Coast Suns. Unbeaten flag ruse, 10 wins, one draw, 42 points, 315%. Only team over 200%. Most dominant, yeah, season ever in yep. FIW history. Hawthorne in at second. They are 10 and one. Brisbane, 36 points, nine and two. Then you have Kawana and Wallyalup at 32 points each with 40% separating them. Yartapulti clear in sixth on 118%, seven wins and four losses. Richmond and Essendon are seventh and eighth. Richmond in seventh, 131%. Uh, Essendon on 104. Sneak six, in the finals. The six, four and one, the bomb race. <laughs> Uh, Nam, the D's left their run too late, winning four of their last five. So you have a look at it. Five weeks ago, they oh, were should've... two and four. Geelong and what Melbourne will be 87. Different? So, yeah. Big percentage. Yeah. Oh, plus, plus the... Yeah. yeah. Plus, okay. yeah. So if Essendon had managed to lose that uh, Dreamtime game, they still would have made the finals. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, maybe it was going back to losing to uh, Essendon by 70 points on grand final eve. Demons mm. and Cats will be filthy. They didn't make the Geelong, finals. Oh, 100%. Year. Geelong, filthy, lost... Four games they probably shouldn't have lost. Yep. Four, six, and one. They probably won a game they shouldn't have won. That's a year that's gone missing. Euro Rogue, yeah, lost their last four. Not good that for the That seems about right for them. Maybe yeah. they'll go up next year, I think, the Saints. Uh, the yeah. Dogs. People keep saying that. True. And they, they, never, they haven't made finals. What, have, what have we said every... Well, you have, always compare it to the men's as well. They're just both always about it, 11th to 15th, the Saints, yeah, aren't they? Just yeah, mid. yeah just love mid. Love the Saints. <laughs> love their setup. Like Love their players, their media team. Very great to too. work with. <laughs> But the club's just mid. <laughs> Great setup down there too. Uh, the dogs. <laughs> Great setup. Great setup. Yeah. Great setup. Your mids. Yeah, <laughs> the dogs got up to twelfth. <laughs> that is awesome. Well From done, last, doggies. Were they last last year? Yeah. Uh, the worst problem is because they've finished twelfth by point two of a percent. Oh yeah. They are in that six to twelve, uh, seven to twelve range, and get a tougher draw next year. That's, That's right. Okay. They'll be up for it. They'll be, they'll up be for it. They'll be hundred percent. They'll be up for yeah. it. West Coast by getting pumped by the Swans. Finish thirteenth and get an easier draw next uh, year. The old tactical, the no. ta yeah. Letting the <laughs> swans, right? letting the swans run right in the last quarter. Daisy, like, girls, this this one's a bit done here. Just <laughs> let, let the margin creep yeah, out. Yeah, you might move the magnets around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Carlton, yeah, <laughs> four and seven, fifty percent. That sums up their year. Yeah, they kept Geelong goalless. I still don't get it. Yeah, my beloved Swans finished the season on a high. Hence why I'm in the gear. We finished on a high. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm up and are. about. <laughs> uh, Three and eight. Not a no, not year. great. Though, not yeah. a great year. Uh, GWS, one, nine, and one. They showed a lot of fight towards the back half of the year, so we'll give them some credit. I think they'll show us a bit more against uh, next year. We chatted with Caitlin Serhoy last week, who told us what, a lot's going on there. So some improvement. Gold Coast, one, nine, and one with that one oh. win over the Swans. I'm going to say they were the worst team in the comp this year. Well, not according to well, I know, I know, the <laughs> I know, I know the, what I'm like, saying. Mm. Collingwood's finished last. One they and had ten. A lot of injuries. Sons. Were Collingwood just bad. had the injury year from hell. Yeah. I said all year I'm not being tough on Collingwood. Okay. They they were poor, but I'll everything give, I'll against give you that. them. As an Essendon supporter, I will be tough on Collingwood. Oh, <laughs> as a I'd no, say as a noted right. Collingwood every hater, right. love to see him finishing last. Yeah. Love to see. It. Yeah. But also, actually, got chatting to someone at the North Melbourne game on Saturday afternoon who knew a bit that went on behind the scenes about the strength and conditioning coach leaving three weeks before the season started. What? How did you get into this conversation? I just know people's <laughs> stats guy. <laughs> Few other things went on behind the scenes that were not great. So Collingwood just write this season off completely. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I'll give you that. Build again next year. You got the number one draft pick. Hopefully everyone comes back from injury. You've got another season into Ruby, Benici. Get some kicking efficiency and we're sweet to go. Beautiful. Great. Yeah. All right. With enough being said, let's get to, I'm going to say, one of my favorite players in the competition. Absolute star from Kiwana, the Adelaide Crows. It is Anne Hatchard. 
Right, how good's this? AFLW today, we have, I'll be honest, a guest I've asked for a couple of times this year, and the Crows have finally made finals, so the social team's like, you know what? You can have them. We have Anne Hatcher joining the show today. Anne, welcome in. Thank you so much. Yeah, stoked to, to be on here with you guys. Woo! Now, we've got to, we've got yeah. to mention. Was, oh, sorry. It's going to be the yeah. follow-up all, mention. All now, right, It's mate. all well and good that we've got Anne Hatch out here, one of the best players in the AFLW, about to go out and try and win another premiership. But appearing for the first time ever on the AFLW show, Social Gal Jord. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Social Gal, in turn, everything does everything behind the scenes as far as all the notes. So welcome in. Don't be scared. <laughs> Don't be scared, George. You're in a very welcome place here. Where are you studying? You're at Coll Arts, aren't you? Coll Arts. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And we'll go straight to you because footy finals important. Best time of the season. You made it. Double chance after the big win over Geelong on Friday night. How exciting is it, one, to be playing finals again and the security of the double chance? Yeah, it's super exciting. Um, you know, for a second there, I didn't think we were going to uh, get over Geelong, which is a bit scary. So, um, yeah, thankfully we could get the win and, yeah, lock in that top four spot, which is, yeah, super exciting. And, and just I, I think because you guys have been one of the best teams in the competition for so long, I think that allows us to be more critical of you guys. Um, and during, during the course of the year, there, there were some times where I'd been like, oh, Adelaide in a slump? Like what, what is, I wasn't seeing like the usual... Um, Crispness. Yeah, that we we had seen in you know previous seasons. Is that something that gets talked about? Did you guys uh, notice it? Did you focus? Was there was there any talk about that? Yeah, for sure. There, there's some games where you go in and you and then you come out and you're like, oh, that probably wasn't up to our standard or how we kind of want to play. Um, but I, I think it's kind of good that we've had some of those games because we've got so many learnings out of it and we know that once finals hit, we, we can't do that. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's been good and bad. Um, there's times where we're like, oh, are we going to get there? But no, we, we have the talent and we'll be able to do it if we can play our strong footy. Go for it, yeah, George. Go, George. Get in there, George. Nuts. Come on. Um, after this season, what do you think needs to be improved for next season? Um, I think just... A lot of it comes down to our um, goal kicking, I think. If we could just finish off a few times, um, I think we'd be winning by a lot more goals. But, um, yeah, definitely just some of our um, kicks into Ford 50 and just nailing that down and then obviously fin finishing it off. And then, um, you know, once you get a few more go goals um, onto that, yeah, we should be absolutely flying. But, yeah, there's lots of different things we can take into next year. Is that something that you talk about like during the week at the club? Because there's been a couple of games where if you kick straighter, you probably win them or you have better delivery. Or is it something like, oh, we know we can fix fix that. And it's not a problem that you keep on bringing up because if you keep bringing it up, it becomes that sort of panic mode in the game. <laughs> oh, oh, oh we for sure. <laughs> You're probably just going to get in the girls' heads. They're going to get the ball in, in front of goals and be like, I've got to kick this now. So um, it's something we know we can do and, and we're practising our goal kicking and it's just pretty much coming down to can we get um, like inside 30s to get better scoring shots and let's just finish off. So it's just having that confidence. We know we can do it. It's just, yeah, doing it in the game. So I think we'll get there eventually. Um, Ed Marinoff having an absolutely huge season. Um, she's going in favourite for the W award. Does that get talked about? Are you guys like after every game she comes off with 40 disposals, you're like, mate, you're looking pretty good. Or, you know, if you've had a ripper and you've stolen some votes off her, does that get talked about? <laughs> to be honest, uh, no, it doesn't really. I think um, we're probably all just sitting there knowing in the back of our minds that she's going to be up there and she's having an incredible season and it's just yeah, amazing to see. So I, I guess you don't really need to talk about it because everyone just bloody knows it. <laughs> yeah. Has, it, have you noticed her doing anything different this season? Like has she stepped up more at training? Is she, you know, running running 5Ks to training or, you know, like is there anything different? Um, No, not really, to be honest. She just is always working hard and um, she's the hardest working player probably in the whole league. Um, mm. She's always doing something, trying to improve, and I guess – um, yeah, this off season, she's just really improved some of those little things that have just made her an even better player. So it's just incredible to, to be able to see her just really flourishing. And especially with this new captain role as well, she's just a, a massive leader and a big role model to these younger girls coming through. With last year's prelim, you guys lost to North by one point. Are you ready for this round? Um, look, yeah, um, <laughs> that was pretty, uh, 
a pretty sad time last year, losing by one point. But no, we're super excited to take on North. I think it's going to be a great challenge. You know, we didn't lose to them by much uh, the last time we played, and we know if we play our footy, we, we can get the win. So um, we don't mind coming in as the underdogs. I like being an underdog. I feel like a little bit of less pressure. So, yeah, I think it's going to be an absolutely cracker of a game. Yeah. And final just footy question before we get onto the ridiculousness, is, which is what we're all here from. You did play North two weeks ago, and – Arguably, if you did play to your best, you'd probably win that game. Do you take a lot of learning from that going, we can definitely beat North Melbourne, who haven't lost all year? Oh, 100%. We definitely have the confidence and we know that, you know, we just finished off a few more goals and we've got the win. So um, it's just, yeah, going in there, knowing we have we have the ability to get up and just playing our footy and then, yeah, hopefully we can get the result we want. All right, very serious question here, Anne. <laughs> I know what this is. I saw on your Insta this year because my I've I've just in, I, I sit down and I watch footy with my partner who's just learning about footy, and she's like, "Who's that?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's Anne Hatchard, babe. She's amazing." <laughs> so then we're on your Instagram. So now we stalk you all the time, and she's like, "She's like, has she become a lash technician?" And I'm like, yes. And we watched this video of you and you're like, well, I'm just trying to save a few bucks. And so your wife has like false lashes that she gets put on and you're like, oh, let's save a few bucks. You're going to get trained. You actually went to training to become a full lash technician and you do her lashes. Please talk me through the whole thing. And the economics yeah. behind it because it's <laughs> genius as How far as I'm concerned. How much are you saving? How much is the course cost you? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's quite funny because it was like over a hundred bucks each time she went in for this appointment, which is like every what? fortnight. And I'm just like, far out. This is a lot. So she she was actually really keen on just doing a course by herself and having a little side hustle. And then next minute, I'm like, no, nah, I'm coming too because I want to do your lashes and save so much money. I worked out all the math. I'm like, we're going to save easily a couple grand a year with this. Um, and now she's not using it as a side hustle at all. She she did my lashes a few times, but the one time I tried to train with them, I'm like, they're flapping in my eyeballs, and I'm like, this is, this is not cool. I do not want them anymore. So now I'm a better lash tech than she is, and I do her lashes pretty much once a week. I do some refills. So she's always got these nice, luscious lashes. That is incredible. That's like a real commitment to not only cost saving, yeah. but to your partner. But like, it, that's massive. But your partner cuts your hair. Oh, yeah, she does. Yeah, you're absolutely so right. She cuts it and colours it. So No, but she was already trained. Oh, okay. Big so big. you've gone out and gotten like a new skill. That's yeah. massive. I feel like there's a spreadsheet involved in this. Like, please <laughs> tell me. It's like, look, if we save this, we can probably do this. Like, you, you, I saw that you eloped in Vegas. There could have been a way bigger wedding suite there if you'd done this earlier. <laughs> yeah, literally. But um, we, yeah, we were like, going on this massive holiday um let's just get a lope so it was good fun and then we did have a massive party when we got home and <laughs> it was just awesome so we just had the best time of our lives over there yeah well played so with pre-game ritual stuff do you have any like banger songs that you listen to before you go out there like pump you up ready for the game um that's a, quite a funny one because all the girls they're like the younger crew they're just playing all this doots, doots, doots stuff and I'm just like <laughs> I'm not having a bar of it. I just, the songs I listen to probably aren't going to pump people up. So I can see why they play that stuff. But, oh, they're always, yeah, I don't even know the songs they play. It's just the same stuff. And I'm just like trying to hide over in the physio room, trying to block out the noise sometimes. It's quite funny. But it, it is, they do keep me young, those girls. So it, it is quite funny. What's your what? What are the songs you listen? They're not normal pump up songs. What are you doing? Adagio for strings or oh, something like that? Be friends. <laughs> um, do you know what? One of them I actually do listen to, and it's quite in the car on the way. So I'm driving to the game. Um, Work bitch by Britney Spears. Yeah, it's probably yeah my go to. Love I that. Absolutely love that song. I used to have a bit of Eminem when I was uh, when I was playing footy at, in my lower lower levels. Yeah, Getting paid a hundred bucks a game to turn up. Wow, it was great. My Great general pump, pump up is here I go again, White Snake. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, the only other footy question I had is uh, long sleeve merchant. Why the long sleeves? It's bloody hot out there. Is this just sun safe so you keep your family happy or is this just a superstition from when you played footy when you were younger? Um, I just get really, really cold. Um, fair. So 
I, I do love a long sleeve and a few of the other girls have jumped on board, which is cool. Um, but there are some games where I'm like, nah, I can't put the long sleeve on. But I don't know, there's just something about the long sleeves that I just love. So um, every time it's a little bit cooler, I'm like, yep, it's going on. Yeah. Um. So outside of football, you're an aircraft refueler. How long have you been doing that and what made you actually start doing that? That's awesome. Yeah, it's such a random job. I would have never <laughs> ever thought about ever filling up airplanes. So I started it back in February. Um, the company literally came to the club like uh, any females keen on doing this because, um, you know, they just wanted more females in that kind of role because there's not a lot of females out Filling the our diversity and, quota. Yeah, <laughs> great. Yeah, and I'm like, I stuck my hand up straight away. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's something that... Um, I sound like, like, sounds like I would love to do and a uh, very hands-on job and I absolutely love it. It's just such a random job and, you know, I get to drive out in my big truck and then connect the hose and fill up the plane. So it is such a, such a fun job and something that's just nice to um, have outside of footy. Yeah. And, and you've, you're pretty big on social media as well with your, yourself and, and your wife. Like you've opened up basically behind the scenes of what your day-to-day is and a few other players are starting to do that too. What's that been like as far as like, hey, this is the silliness that I get up to plus a behind the scenes look at what it is to be a professional footy player? Yeah, it's it's actually quite fun. I think that a lot of people do just look at you as a footballer and um, to be able to show them that no, we're just human and we like to have fun and do silly things. I think it's really cool and these kids can look up to us and be like, you know, they can have fun and sometimes life can get hard too and there's we all go through different emotions and it's totally fine so I think that being able to open up and share different fun side to us and sometimes sad side it can be yeah it's quite enjoyable and I do like it I think the Crows are like the most terminally online playing group (laughs) because you've got Maddie Newman who's who her and her twin sister are massive Jess Waterhouse is huge and then yesterday it popped up in my feed my partner showed me that I think Ebony Marinoff now on TikTok as well I'm like Ah, so the Crows are really leaning into this online persona. I love it. Yeah, yeah that was her first ever TikTok. Um, <laughs> I never thought she would ever post a video, but she's on it now and hopefully she keeps the ball rolling. <laughs> so give me a little bit of a stalk on your Instagram before getting questions for this interview. I saw that you had two adorable little sausage dogs, Toby and Otis. Who named them and how did you come up with the names? <laughs> Um, yeah, they are just the cutest little things. Um, I don't know. We had this massive list going of different names and, um, we both like the name Toby. I'm not sure who actually thought of that one. Um, and so we got Toby and then six months later, we're like, "Mm, I want another one. And I didn't actually tell Georgie that we're getting Otis. So I've picked him and he was getting delivered on this little truck from New South Wales. And I went and picked him up and uh, brought him home. And she's like, what? And... I named him Otis because I just love that name. So he was already Otis. So, um, and yeah, surprised with Otis, and it was just yeah. She so just freaked out. She's like, "Who's is that?" Yep, it's yours. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> it was the best. Lol. Because yeah. sausage dogs aren't known for their great personalities. No, are they? I got a friend of mine who's got one named Marvin. Oh yeah, I don't know Mar- Marvin. Marvin rules. I'll give yeah. Marvin some credit. Now, final question. Yeah. This is the Briny question. I don't know if you've been told about this, but Briny has a sp- specific question they ask every player that comes on this show. Uh, a player in your team will get thrown under the bus and you'll also <laughs> give a player in your team some credit. Now, note, I have answered you to the person who would save me all year. The, the, okay, that makes absolutely no sense to you, Anne. It will make so sense here we go. Oh, yeah, my head's exploding she right now. She literally couldn't listen to a thing you said there, mate. When you see their eyes wash over, you've got to stop talking. No one right. listens to what I say anyway. <laughs> oh, I understand that, but you've got to read the room. I can't do that. I'm a white guy. <laughs> I think everything's fine. Okay, Anne, so I'm going to ask you like a random question and so yeah. uh, uh, in a situation. And then you're going to tell us who is the person you will most likely choose from your team and who is the person you will least likely choose from your team. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you wake up one morning, it's grand final day, the Crows are in the grand final. You wake up and you look around and you're like, I don't know where I am. You've got absolutely no idea. And you get up and you go to leave the room that you're in and you turn the door handle and the door handle comes off and you're like, I can't get out of this room. There is no way off. It's two hours before the grand final. How am I going to make it? You pull your phone out of your pocket. You've got 1% battery. Like there's 1%. You've got one phone call and you've probably got like 20 seconds on that phone call max. 
Who is the person that you are calling from your team who is definitely going to be able to come and save you? And who is the person that you are absolutely not going to call because they're useless? Oh, that's a good one. I would definitely be calling Jess Allen. I think her army background, she oh, yeah. cool, calm, collected. Um, she would definitely know how to come save me. Um, and I definitely would not be calling um, Noffy. <laughs> definitely not. Um, I just think it'd be a bit frantic. I'm not sure she'd know how to put a door handle on. So, um, yeah, definitely would not be picking Noffy. Well, Alex, as he explained very poorly before, he would pick you. He would pick you to absolutely, he's like, I'd pick Anne. She'd just come and she'd knock down the door. See? Just run <laughs> straight through the door for me. I'm safe. Yeah. <laughs> Don't need a door handle. The door's knocked down. <laughs> so he's been absolutely stoked to have you on here so he could tell you yeah. that you're his you're his person. Yeah, just to save me. Out of anyone in the AFL. I'll knock a door down whenever is needed. Yes. <laughs> it's good. If this studio door ever breaks on us, ring it in. Yep, call me up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this has been uh, this has been one of the awesome. funnest interviews that we've done all year. Good luck in the finals, Anne, and thank you for joining us today on AFLW Today. Go get him, man. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Hopefully we can get some wins. Woo! I get that. Anne Hatchard, friend of the show. Friend of the pod. Legend. That's a legend. Old Hatchie. Yeah. Hey? I got, I've got to <laughs> figure out who I'm going to chuck my bandwagon on for the finals now that the Swans are out. Mm. And leaning towards the crows. Well, flag ruse is obvious because they're unbeaten. They're odds on to win the whole damn thing. We've won before, though. Yeah, I know. Adelaide has won. You'd before. hate to see. Brisbane it. Won You'd before. hate to see the like unbeaten team not win it. A lot of the uh, neutral supporters would be going for Hawthorne because Hockball nah. very fun. Nah, I don't know. I feel yeah. like. the last thing I want is Hawthorne to win another premiership, like across the whole competition. <laughs> they they just keep winning. Go away, <laughs> honestly. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on the crows. Fair enough. I think Are I've you going to jump on the crows? I think I've been. They've a, won I think I've been like on them all year and just waiting for them to do something. They've won. They've won enough. Mate. It's not the bombers, uh, Bryony. Who, who yeah. are you leaning towards? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably like Hawthorne or North. Hawth yeah. Okay. In yeah. behind new, the screen, who are we going for? Every, who's everyone going for? Bryony? In the finals, who are you going for? <laughs> wow. Oh, boo. Yeah, I, don't, I don't mind that. Hawthorne <laughs> are fun. They're, they're good. Boo. <laughs> and Spence is just a hater, so I don't know who Spence will go for. She goes for Carlton, so probably probably not Hawthorne. Anyway, let's get into the games from the weekend. Friday night, Geelong and Adelaide. Four points separating the two. Four, four, twenty-eight. Four, eight, thirty-two. For the Crows, Kawana getting the job done. Um, Geelong, you realise there's two halves in a game Stop. of football, right? Really? They they literally kicked twenty-five of their twenty-eight points in the first half. They're like, yeah. "This is awesome. We're just going to kick goals. We're going to kick accurately." Then the Crows kick three goals to zero in the second half. The Crows were awesome defensively, yeah. which we touched on. We were talking about this before the show. But come on, Joel, you got to kick a goal in the second half. Yeah. That was just brutal. They could have yeah. won. I was like, could have won a, your tip. I'm a big superstition person, oh, and okay. I was like, when I saw Geelong up at halftime, and because I didn't start watching it till halftime, I yeah. was like, oh, we're on here. And then I was like, I should not get excited. Turn the game on because they're Fair. only Respect. winning. No. You two would both do that. Only oh. winning because yeah, I'm I'm you're not watching. It's narcissism 101. <laughs> it's, I'm on board um, with this. Like if. It, <laughs> When I've gone to games of footy this year and like a mate goes to the bar or something and then the Swans kick like three goal strike, stay at the bar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can get, only, get out. You can get only out. come back at quarter time. Oh, yep. I hate all that stuff. Nah. Just, let, just let yourself enjoy no. life and watch the this, footy. <laughs> stats guy, you've been in the office when I've personally had my horse running and someone said it's home and it's been run that's down on the line. That's different. No. That's the commentator curse. Yes. Completely different. Same thing. Oh, actually, I don't agree. I don't believe it's in that a, stuff either. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, I, I do respect it, but nah. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not very I was like, no, and then I was like, I had you on this, so I had Alex on this show. I'm going, don't watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm on this saying, I don't believe in this stuff. And I was like, yes, stats guy, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to go sit on the couch. I love that. Um, and I watched it, and I watched Geelong fizzle away. They did. And oh. I watched Chelsea Bedell just stop anything. Yeah. Going into Geelong's forward fifty, she was like, Gandalf, she was, "You shall not pass." Right? Yes. She was an absolute brick wall, and she's the reason why the Crows won. Oh, I can yeah. tell you that, and she's the reason why uh, Ash Maloney didn't win Goal Kicker of the Year on her own. So, I know. I know. yeah, she was she was awesome. Yeah, absolutely awesome. So, Georgie Prasparkas. Did kick a pretty sick banana. Yep. Yeah, that was really like, nice. That was really good. Furthering my point of team, Georgie. Just, yeah, just she's bits pretty good. like that. I mean, she's pretty good. Maddie's had a bloody awesome year too, yeah. but I'll keep going on that. Um, but I thought uh, uh, Friswell was really good as well as Becky Webster for mm -hmm. Geelong. Becky Webster was good. It's yeah. just 
They're just going to look back on this. They're, they're probably on the tins today, Mad Monday, mm -hmm. just going, we should have been, we should oh, be in finals. Why yeah. aren't we playing finals? If they're in finals, I'd back them to win a final. If, if They've really come into form later yeah, in the season, yeah. haven't If they, they and the Ds made the finals, you would be crapping your dax if you were one you of the top four teams yeah, that had to play them next week. A hundred percent. It's like they just left their run too late. They yeah. were trying to, like Melbourne, Geelong were just like stuffing around in the but first also, half in, of the season. Injury Didn't, bug. Yeah, I, I get it. Mm. But. They have enough depth. Like, they, like we just you just said, like I wrote down Friswell, <laughs> some of those depth players that just play well every week, similar yeah. to North, similar to the top team. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Melbourne have those type of players. It just didn't really work. Yeah. yeah. Morrison versus Marinoff I wrote Ooh, down yeah, as well. That, that was, was just so fun. They both had 25 head head. disposals and 10 tackles. They're yeah. like, yeah. you get a stat, you get a stat, I'll get a stat, I'll get yeah, a stat. We'll yeah. just crash tackle each other. Really fun matchup. But Marinoff yeah, walks awesome. off going, I had six clearances and you had five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, there we go. So she won one stat. She won one stat. Madison Newman on the wing, plenty of pace once again. Yep. Just just don't give her space on the wing. It's a yep. pretty simple recipe if you're playing Adelaide. You, you try and stop because she's their outlet runner. Yep. They use the switch kick to her at all times and it works. The biggest problem, as mentioned with Ann Hatchard, can't kick straight. Yeah. It's costing them yeah, it's cost him yeah. games all year. Yep. So, 12 shots on goal from 34 inside. 50s. Zero for first quarter. So they they, yep. they could have been up in the first quarter. Gould was awesome though. She was 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 3-3. Three, three. I forgot. I thought it was like 3-1 yep. or 2, but it was 3-3 mm. three, three in the end. Uh, yeah, she's had an awesome season, Caitlin Gould. I'm still yeah. waiting for the Crows to, to sh just to like explode and show their best. I, I feel if like... they kicked accurate though. They are they the potent, they are. I'm on board with them for the finals, but they are the... I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And then I'll look back into it and go, yeah, they didn't do it. Yeah, I feel like they're like, I'm going to do it. I'm Very gonna, experienced yeah. in the finals, though. Yeah, yeah they yeah. are. Like uh, they're, they're, they all are. They're going to they're gonna sharpen up in the finals, it's, definitely. Get, get the top four spot, get into finals, and yeah. then go from there. Because they've got a home final, either a home prelim or a home semi. Last year, they lost the qualifying final and absolutely smacked the Swans in the semi. Like, smacked them. Yep. So they're set for another good uh, good showing in the finals. So the fan base is Geelong fans are just like, ah, oh, this, just what a waste. Yeah. It's, They'll be it feels like a waste. They'll be reflecting the yep. Geelong fans and be like, it's been really competitive in this back half of the of the season. But just, just rocky oh, start. Oh, just, my God. Yeah. yeah, there was just some really, really poor performances. Yep. And they'll look back on that as well and, and, and do some work. And yep. the Crows like top four. How good is life? Bring it mm. on. We can win the flag. Yeah, absolutely. Saturday. Icon Park, first of two games there. The Demons, 11 8 74, belted Collingwood, 4 3 27. This game was actually really fun. Yeah. I had three screens going on Saturday. I was having the time of my life. <laughs> what mm -hmm. was the three screens? Obviously, races. Racing, footy, and then the other screen on races because I had two, you've got two two rights owners with the races for Melbourne Cup Week. So I just. You uh, got a double screen for the races. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. More chance to win. It's just. I hate <laughs> it so much. Nice. So much. Anyway. Good game. Uh, the D shared the love around. Eight uh, eight different goal kickers yep. of their 11. Mm -hmm. uh, the Kate Hall rule was in full effect again. She it kicked was. three, so the D's won. It was really good seeing her back in, in form, and doing all of the Kate Hall things. Yeah, yes. we were a little bit worried. They said it was, she was a uh, test. And then yeah. she comes out and has one of her best games of the yeah. season. Three goals, seven amazing. disposals. They just had a, a real shared performance. And I was against Collingwood, who were last. But, they but you look at that team. Them. They flogged them. They they just dominated in so many areas. You got Eliza McNamara, another friend of the show. We did the uh, yep. ASIC shoot with. Mm -hmm. She's been amazing this season. Thirty two disposals again. Every time the ball was in like a contest, she just comes out with it. And yeah. she was really good as well. Yeah, mm. um, I thought the D's had really good forward pressure, great yep. ball movement, and they played aggressive footy as well. Yeah, and kicking the three goals in five minutes in that second quarter as well. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, because it was close in the first quarter. Like yeah. a lot of pressure. Like Collingwood always doing the Colin, pressure at the start, I mean, and then yeah, after that. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, Bannon was awesome yep. as well. She, I just think she's just going to keep getting better. And as long as Melbourne can stay a good team and competitive and be close, if not in those top eight, yep. like and feed her the ball, she's yep. just going to get better and better. Um, Mark's inside fifty. If you look at that, Melbourne uh, thirteen did help their for their forwards have yeah. finally clicked into gear. And Collingwood two two yeah, oh, just can't win yeah. a game but taking two. We've marks. said all year they haven't got forwards. Yeah, like it's it's been it's that's their biggest thing in the off season is what is to go and find a forward. Yeah, and to go and get another midfielder. Well, yeah, yeah. Benici was. Great with twenty disposals, two goals, but you need some yeah more goals from your yeah. from your forwards for sure. And yeah. Liv Purcell, like who missed half the season with a broken face, is like, oh my season's over. This sucks. Yeah, she, she was great. It was her best game of since yeah. she's come back, which yeah. is it'll be really frustrating for her going. Oh, that's god damn it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So the fan base of the D's are just like 
Same as Geelong. Shouldn't have got smashed by Essendon. How did how did that even happen? I still don't understand how. Because sometimes the bombers are good. Yeah, yeah sometimes <laughs> that to be on their jersey. Sometimes. Yeah, fifty no, percent of the time no good they every win time. every that's, time. No, it's that's, that's on great. the membership. It's like we will suck, but also be good. But also continue to suck. But they're in the finals, unlike the uh, the men's team. So yeah, good on them. Uh, and then the Collingwood fan base is like, "Thank God that's over." Yep, right. they'll be. Yep. Yeah, a lot of work to do in the off season. There's for the a pies. lot of a lot of soul searching, a lot of reflecting being soul done. Soul searching. At, yeah. uh, oh, there would be. Uh, After a few drinks, Collingwood. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, couple of Sherbys <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Couple of <laughs> Shandies down yeah. at the RSL. <laughs> Shandies from out. Well, so, the thing like is, they can't sit in the change rooms for a few hours and have a couple of tins because there was another game that night. So it's like, <laughs> get out. <laughs> yeah, pub. Well, no, but no, that's what I mean. Like sometimes the last game I of the know, season, you sit around the change rooms and just hang out. Yeah. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Henson Park, Sydney Swans, 10-14-74, belted West Coast, 4-4-28. Hi, this is a great afternoon. This is a great <laughs> two hours in my in my day. Swans are back to Alex is back up and about. Look at him yeah. smiling yeah. like this. The Swans booming. Must have You're won. absolutely <laughs> booming. This is the performance that they'd been threatening to show and find Like they played four quarters of footy. Yep. For the first goddamn time all yeah. season. I know it was against West Coast, but this is where both teams are on the ladder. Like yep. three and three wins yep. against four wins. Um I thought this game was actually really entertaining in the first half and then the Swans just got on top. They really kicked into another gear, didn't they? Second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. Like, Laura Gardner just started getting her hands on the footy in and out and under clearances. I thought she was fantastic. But it was Tanya Kennedy and Montana Ham, who for 25 minutes was the best player in the competition. Yeah. And then she fizzled out. Yeah. But for the first... Good signs. She was still young. For the yeah. first 25 minutes of the game, I was like, this is <laughs> what I've been waiting for. Yeah. I, I had that many people text me going... How good do you feel about this Montana hand performance? Because she had six clearances from 12 possessions. I'm like, mm. yeah, it's everything that I've wanted and more. Mm. <laughs> and I keep posting that gif of, um, oh, what's the name, Shelly? What's he going? Hey! Yeah, him. yeah every, time, every time she gets it. Anytime she gets he a clearance. He does post that a lot. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> He loves it. Yeah, I do. He he's got, it. Just got it on, his, on his Twitter. It's just everywhere. Just hand. I don't twit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't. Um, <laughs> so I said before the game that Beck Privatelli was on 47 goals. And I'm blaming Debs from True Bloods on this. She was actually on 46. Right. Oh. She kicked 3-3 three, three and probably could have kicked 7. Could have had her 50th yeah. for, the, uh, for their career. She oh. was desperate. One of them was a touch that wasn't touched, so the uh, process didn't work once again, the technology. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Privatelli should have had a 50th goal in the final game of the year, uh, which was uh, oh, that's right. a bit annoying. But Bella Smith became Tony Lockett. Mm. Kicked oh, five. Yeah, she five, was I incredible. Thought, yeah. yeah, she was incredible. I thought she kicked Best four. Game. So five. Yeah, when but Polly five. was here in the studio a couple of weeks ago, she was like, why isn't Bella Smith playing? And everything that Polly's been saying all year came to prove it was Dominate. taking grabs, but the Swans moving inside 50. It's just like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, their inside 50s were nuts. He had 61% scoring efficiency. So yeah. they'd head in there. Oh, yeah, we're just going to kick a goal. And then the other one was we talked about marks inside 50 in the other game. This one's even crazier. 17 to 1 marks inside 50. Yeah. Which is... West Coast, took seven West Coast the first two weeks had a few uh, players taking marks, even yeah. some of their smaller yeah. players. They had one up mark inside 50. Privatelli was just taking oh. marks yeah. left, right, and center. Although I will say in West Coast defense, five, sorry, four of the top five ball getters in the game were from West Coast. Yeah. yeah. So besides yep. Gardner... Um, Shock me. Yeah, yeah 26. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had the top, you know, five ball getters. So they were still getting their hands on yeah. the ball, which I think, yeah. you know, shows that they do have the capability to be a good team. Yep. Um, and I think that they're, they're just in the works at the moment. Yeah. So, Bella, Bella yeah. Lewis was one of them, 23 disposals, yeah. two-way running. I thought she yeah. was really good. Mm. But yeah, um, I thought Tanya Kennedy got the best of Ella Roberts as well. Like, yeah. Like I know Ella, match up, Ella yeah. Roberts had a bit of the footy, but I thought Tanya Kennedy Not clearly won that battle. Yeah. Um, she was the top rated player on the ground according to fantasy and everything. So there you go. She was great. Um also West Coast, maybe not try and start a fight when the Hamilton sisters and Tanya Kennedy are in the middle of it. I wouldn't be messing with Tanya Kennedy. Yeah. I wouldn't mess She's with the tough. Hamilton sisters. Yeah. They're crazy. <laughs> Honestly. Like Lexi was charging and then all of a sudden Cynthia's there. I'm like, oh, that's oh, a bad yeah. idea. It's on. Yeah. It's on. It Love was, a bit of biff though. There was, yeah. So there was a downfield free kick uh, late in the third quarter because someone got thumped and then Bella Smith kicks the goal, gets in the face of the West Coast player because, you know, I've kicked a goal. It's basically yeah. bang, gets thumped on the ground. And then they just converge. Yeah. So once again, the Swans are just like, we might not win games of footy, but we're going to fight. Yeah. <laughs> but they won. Love it. Yeah. Love it. So it was all good. So it was great. Uh, Swan fan, but Swans fans are like, well, that was good. <laughs> At least yes. you can be happy with a good finish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like playing your best game at the last game of the season is like, oh, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, you go out on a high. <laughs> and West Coast, they ran out of steam. 
They ran out of steam, but they'll still be best happy. season ever. Yeah. Probably disappointed with the last month. Yeah. Yeah. They just they just ran out of steam. Yeah. yeah. Young young team, they'll be good next year. Daisy's done well. Oh, yeah, she'll no, do, get she'll them do to do like well. that next level, and then she'll take up the next By level again next year. Now the preseason. Yeah. So things we have, to think about in the off season, yes. things to work on. Twelve, this is, this 12 is games next year is six and six uh, a fair yeah, fair what guess are, of where they would be next yeah, year. Yeah, I reckon. If they can win two more games. Yeah, yeah I, agree, I agree. Yeah, I think they got two yeah. more games in them. Yep. For the Swans who, who will get the weak draw because they finished in the bottom six, final should be the goal yeah. with with, Gard- with, with Gardner, yeah. Morfitt, Malloy to come back and potentially another player who we're about to mention. Let's get to Arden Street, North Melbourne, 11, 12, 78, defeated Gold Coast, 2, 3, 15. Yes. I got to see Jasmine Garner up close and personal because I was at the ground hanging over the fence. She is so goddamn good. Watching it on screen, you notice it. But Mm -hmm. when you're there and she's in and around the footy with her movement, she's she's literally Scott Pendlebury with how much time she has. There's only a handful of players that would be able to stand out in that north. Like, obviously, north just were absolutely flying on top of the ladder. The fact that Garner can stand out in the side, which has so many guns, is awesome. 24 disposals, kicked a goal. Like you said, she gets the ball. Even when it's like a mark or she plays on, it looks like you can just dance around everyone and then hit a target without yeah. even looking. Just you just don't awesome. expect her to get touched by anyone, oh, do you? You no. think, oh, you see her, the ball going in, she's in the pack, you're like, okay, yeah, what's going to happen next? Jazzy's going to get this, but then yeah. what's that? You know? I think it's she's just very smart at where she positions herself. Like a lot of the time players will rush into the contest, but she might stay out and then the next one yeah. she'll run in. I don't know. Just really, she's really unpredictable good. Very to unpredictable. play on her. Yeah. yeah, it's actually not unpredictable. It's just footy smarts, yeah. putting yourself in the right very spot. Smart, yeah, mm. but if you're playing on Jazzy Garner, just watch her. Don't watch the footy. Follow yeah. her. Yeah, she, she will take you to the right spot. How yeah. are you feeling her, uh, her in a matchup against Marinoff for? Oh, well, that was it was a really w good matchup. Or... Last Marinoff's time. home. Off oh, for the W. Marinoff's home. Yeah, Marinoff's won it. Uh yeah. I think there's a lot of players at North. Marinoff really have stat stolen, have stolen some votes. Some Marinoff yeah. was so far and away the best player in the competition this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll okay. find out though. Uh, well, we will find out. Tune into Fox Footy <laughs> yeah, you'll on be there. Uh, Monday, the 25th of November. There we go. Cheap plug. Also, insanely tall, up close, Kate Sheila. Holy crap. She's oh, enormous. Yeah. yeah. Well, you see it on TV, like, oh, yeah, tall. Yeah. Th- then you, like, meet a stats guy away from her because she's lining up in the glass room. Like, oh, my God. And then the fact yeah. that. And then her arms. Yeah. It's good mm-hmm. luck Good luck beating her in a marking contest. And yeah. she's got it. Her work rate is insane. Yeah. Mm. Like, you don't see these things on TV, but when you're at the ground, you see so much more. You do, don't you? North Melbourne should have won this game by a lot more. They were scrappy. Very what do you uh, mean by a lot more? Weirdly <laughs> inaccurate in front of goal. It was still a massive margin. Nah, they, 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 they won by six, 63 points. This should have been 90. Okay, mate. <laughs> like, watch it. Gold like Coast it. had, it felt like Gold Coast had two inside 50s and kicked goals both times. Well, Let me it was, tell you it how was, many inside yeah, 50s. I wrote it down, 51 to 15. <laughs> there you go. That's, which is, that's what I mean, yeah. Not many It was all. a dominant display around there. There was also, so because I, I, it was only because I was there that I saw this. So, it was in the... Why are you your Subaru and your chips? No, I had that at halftime. Oh, okay. we'll get to that. In the second quarter, I can't remember who had the flying shot for North, but it went through. Like, the Gold Coast defender's gone back. If you're watching on screen, I'm putting my hand over my right shoulder, and the ball's missed by about 15 centimetres. Like, I could clearly see it from where I was because I was dead set five metres away. Mm. And the guy and player's like, yeah, nah, I saw that touched. Actually, yeah. And we're all there because I was with a good mate of mine who is really close friends with Talia Randall, yeah, like, yeah. works with her. I went, what? <laughs> no! Where's the, where's the thing? Yeah, where's the review? Where's, where's the review? Where's the, where's the, the goal system? The goal line yeah. And yeah. Didn't, they didn't do it, yeah. And it was like, no. Nah. And it just, it, everyone just moved on. And everyone around there was like, that was a goal! Yeah. I feel like if it was a close game, they would have been like, we should probably check that. And then this one, No, like, they ah. don't check it. But they didn't no, go upstairs. They just, they don't go upstairs. That's not oh, how sorry, it works. Not upstairs. But we, they are, uh, the ball technology. The, I, I understand it. I understand it. But there's no... Like go upstairs. No. The upstairs goes Sorry, to you're them, right, you're right. and yeah. so they have no reason to stop or anything like that. Then other than to unless it's like be- yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So you're right, you're right. if it hasn't been touched, why isn't there a thing going? Yeah, this is a flat line because it obviously didn't come up on the ball. Yeah, it's, it, they have, as we've already realized this season, it it's has, not a hundred percent. It's happened not twice. It cost Privatelli a goal. It obviously cost Gold Coast a win against Collingwood earlier. It's not this a hundred p yet. Uh, sadly, and, it's not. and they have a timeline to do it in. Once the um, once the ball's been kicked back in, that's it. True. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I could have told true. you as yeah. the ball went through, it was a goal. And didn't the goal umpire with his cuff pants and little crease in him cop it? Yeah. Oh, did he? <laughs> oh, everyone around it was like, oh. like Jasmine Garner hit the post like five minutes. Like, you sure that one wasn't touched, mate? Oh. 
No, that's okay. I love park footy because it wasn't like they weren't swearing at him. They were just like, yeah, yeah, just taking the piss. Yeah, yeah, and he was just yeah. like, oh, I don't yeah. mind that. I'm yeah. not into I'm not into booing, but I do like just a cheeky little cheeky smart little yeah. piss yeah. take. That's yeah, totally fine. Got with through there. all this without mentioning Alistair Lockwood as well. Yeah. Four goals, just always in the right spots. Like, yeah. I think criminally underrated can kick a goal from anywhere. Yeah. Alistair Lockwood and just such a good crummer. I'm really happy with the ruse form actually going into yeah. the finals. I think just that pumping its own. yeah, I think that um, You're confident. Yeah, with Ad with Adelaide and also Hawks. Yeah, I don't know if either of those teams are taking their best footy into finals. True, um, but I feel really confident in North. Anything um, other than a flag is a disappointment for North. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep, yep. Because obviously um, lost unbe- the granny last year, but, but they look better this year. Unbeaten, so they do. You've still got a couple of players to come back in potentially. You haven't lost your percentages that far and away the best. You're the best defensive team in the comp. Like if you don't win it, it is a letdown. Are we thinking Carney's back in time? Well, that's that's her. Yeah. Jenna Bruton wasn't playing either. Oh, yeah. Well. So There's so many the guns, yeah. Like, huh. You're yeah. not. Oh, they've still got more to come. North. Hopefully yeah. they'll be back, yeah. Hot chip rating will be up on TikTok at some stage this week. Spencer's got a lot of Melbourne Cup work to do as well. I had the server. 20 bucks is a bit how you're going, but I understand. 20 bucks for a super. That was everywhere. I that's, had a super at Get out of town. It's a rip-off. It's, it's, off. it's a stitch. Very good super. Hot chips. Was it on the rotisserie? Were they carving it off the side? I or they just couldn't. chopped up a couple of little... No, nah, there, there, nah. there was a good serving of lamb. I'll give them that. It was a good serving of lamb. So Quality lamb? Mm. No. It was still good. I was you're not slicing it off the... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I was I was a of it. The hot chips were a 5 out of 10. Yeah. Oh, no. But... It's because they don't, they're co- like they're cooking big batches because there was a big. Nah, line. I don't want excuses. I, I just want good chips. <laughs> if if they were freshly three cooked, week old oil. <laughs> if they were freshly cooked, they would have been at least a seven. Okay. okay. So I like, had good crunch. There was there was some seeds in there, but they just weren't fresh. <laughs> mm. So got there. Fan bases north are like how good's this? Yes. We're unbeaten. We're gonna win the flag. Uh, Gold Coast like. Yeah, that's we're probably going to be worse next year. I may have had the the play camera on Charlie Robotham during the game. Aka, just watching everything. Robotham and Whitford were really good, but other she than was that, good, yeah. but she wasn't giving it a hundred percent. Oh, you know, that's a big call. Ooh. Yeah, she was jogging it towards the end shots fire. Probably Not hard shots to chase, fire, but, it's, but it's also like, north around it's here. your final game of the year. You're playing north. You don't want to get injured. Yeah, gotcha. she was putting herself in the right spots, but there wasn't. Full commitment. Wasn't in the full spot. Yeah, but when there was contest, like she's at the contest of the footy, there's a tap. Like she was in there, but there yeah. wasn't the like super hard, I'm going to yeah. give you everything in a chase. But in fairness, pretty much everyone from Gold Coast did that all day. They weren't, they were there, but weren't there. Yeah. They are like, oh, we have a night out in Melbourne to end our season. Great. <laughs> Let's go to Icon Park. Carlton smashed. 3624 by the Essendon Bomb Rays at 9660. The Bombers are in the finals. Oh, they've Woo! done it. Don't have to be nervous anymore, Bombers fans. So firstly, I do have a chip rating. Very good friend of mine. One of my best friends was at was at Icon Park on Oh, you got a chip Saturday rating night. from someone else? Yes. Oh, beautiful. Uh, so uh, I had two buckets. The first bucket two. was a four and a half out of Dos ten. Dos buquitos. The, the, <laughs> the second was a five and a half out of ten. This was very disappointing. Our first bucket was only four and a half because it was dead set undercooked. Second was marginally uh, better, but still quite expletive, but just marginally more cooked. I had a whole rant about it to my partner. There is a photo and no one's going to be able to zoom in on it, but showing here, there is her holding the hot chips with a child on her shoulders. If Gerald can somehow see that, That's if right. you're watching, there is a child on my friend's shoulders. Uh, it's a partner's daughter with her with the chips in the other hand. So priorities. Yeah, so not great chips at Icon Park. I can also talk to the food at Icon Park because I, when I'm on the boundary at Icon, I get a little bit peckish sometimes because yes. the catering is not yeah. that great. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> So why are we having finals there? <laughs> they'll they'll so, improve the finals, I've heard. I've so heard. there is a lovely lady called Lorraine who runs the canteen yeah. just behind where I do the boundary. And um, I normally go to her and I'm like, Lorraine! <laughs> you got anything for <laughs> Six dimmies, please. <laughs> and she'll cook them up. She'll bring them down and she'll bring the FPOS machine with her. I'll do a tap and we, well, me and the guys sit there. Oh, and how good is that? Terrible dim sims. Oh, terrible. <laughs> terrible. Lorraine, Lorraine cannot make a dim sim, oh. but God, we love it. Oh, but we we good bloody vibes. love good it. Vibes. Um, And so, yeah, we really, we only buy the dim sims so that we can spend time with Lorraine. Oh, that's nice. So, that's nice. I respect yeah. that even though they're yeah. bad dim sims. Mm. Mm. Don't get the dim sims or the chips. I'm not a park. dim sims guy, so I love dim, I love them. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, a like throwback a South to your dim child, sim is my childhood. Yeah. 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 sitting on the beach with a steam dimmy, sawing. <laughs> <and just> like, <laughs> Mom, <laughs> that's a fish, man. Get a fish and chips <laughs> at the beach. 
What are you weirdos in Victoria doing? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm hanging I, out, I've out, had Bond, I'm hanging out at Bondi and Coogee. Like oh, some, must I'm be nice. hanging out at some good <laughs> beaches. <laughs> I'm out of this St Kilda beach rubbish. Oh. Hey, I'm at Frankston Beach. What is it? I'm surrounded by seagulls and seaweed. And A Cu- couple of syringes. <laughs> And uh, yeah, some broken bottles. Some broken bottles. <laughs> Don't go barefoot at Frankston Beach. <laughs> Do not. No. Anyway, anyway, S- what, what game are we talking uh, about? Essendon <laughs> won. Uh, Carlton were like, uh, I know. Hi, Matty Gay. We know it's not Pride Round, but we're just going to show you some respect and not put anyone near you all night. She was. Uh, she was unbelievable. Kate McCarthy um, was about to break the window and yell at the Carlton <laughs> coach. Stop. Going, hey. Stop letting Maddie Gay roam free! It happens all the time, but she's very fit and always in the right spot. She like, is. It's not just roaming free, but she had 33 disposals. Sorry, Gerald. 91% efficiency at those 33 disposals. Yeah. That's just crazy. And Amazing. 10 marks. Everywhere. I, I love it, that you've mentioned Kate McCarthy because she, that, yeah. she is such an incredible footy brain. Yeah, and yeah. you can just see it in the way that she commentates <laughs> and gives special comments. You can see she's just, she's analyzing everything. She's talking. She knows so much about it and the teams that she, you're absolutely yeah. right. She's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, it didn't help that Carlton had a laid out. Abby was a laid out, which is oh, nice. Yeah. McKay and, yeah. McKay and uh, Mimi Hill. Well, Mimi yeah. Hill was named as not oh, playing. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Keely Ske- Skepper didn't play either. So, like, that didn't help. Not great for Carlton. Yeah. Uh, their best and fairest winner was once again fantastic. I think we all know who we're talking about. Keely Shirar. Yeah, she's yeah, amazing. Yeah, 27 disposals, nine tackles. Yeah. The, the Moody showed a little bit. I was asking for that. Darcy Vessi, I was getting in and under. They were having a great game, I thought. Good. Just need more from Darcy. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely yeah, a agree. If we can move on to Essendon for a moment. Yeah, exactly. Let's I was, talk I was them getting up. the negative out of the way before going to the They positive. were awesome, yeah. Nine There's... different goal kickers. Oh, that's Thank what you want to see. Thank you, Essendon Bombers. Yeah. Nine different goal kickers. With Bonnie too good, only having the one disposal. Well, because she did her ankles. Yeah, so, that's what I mean. That, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that shows good. how good the yeah. depth was in that well, game. Well, yeah. in, in this particular game, they haven't yes. they haven't been able to do this consistently throughout the season. <clears throat> so I was, I was really, really happy with them. We need to talk about Georgia Nanscorn because oh. she was... Un- on a mission. Unbelievable. She mm. was in absolutely everything. The incredible run, the pressure, um, that goal that she kicked, yeah, that she awesome. just never stopped. She yeah. just kept going. It almost went out of She's bounds. She's got this look on her face when the ball's near her, like, yeah. get out of my way. Yeah. I'm small, but I'm going to run through She's you. She's so like, powerful oh, through so the good. legs. You know yeah. what I mean? Like her and, her and Maddie Press Barkas, like Maddie Press Barkas is so powerful, mm. but they've mm. got like different body types and Georgia's just able oh, to yeah. get in there and get that power as well. And I love see I love her as a person, but also just love seeing her and her confidence building because she did her ACL in 2022. Yes. When she was it was the bombers first season. Um so she can get to play a game. She came back last year, averaged 19 disposals in that season and this year she's averaging 24. So awesome she's only comeback. getting yeah. more confidence, more ball time. Um I just absolutely love her. Yeah. Georgia Nanskorn. Yeah, those type of players are the ones you need willing you over the line. That's why you you got that 60 points just cuz yeah. pushing the ball forward, running through contests. And awesome. she's just got like heart and soul. You can yeah. see, you know, she's mm. not a big showy player. She's just one, she's like a jazzy Garner. Like mm. you cannot notice her on the field, but um, she's so instrumental in so many things. Yep. No, good call. You not notice Jazzy Garner. On the Sometimes so, that's what she it's hasn't the personality. won. The, it's the personality. Yeah. Very chill. It's just quiet. Yeah. It's yeah. So chill. A couple of stats guys that I follow on like the do actually like all the player rating stuff uh, yep. on social media. They put out a thing last week, and I'm just going to quickly find it here about like the player ratings for a season for players. Yeah. And you've, you know, you've got Aaron Phillips when, you know, she started off, she was the most dominant player in the league, which isn't a shock to anyone. Yeah. But then last year, like Jasmine Garner was that far and away the best player in the competition by like a ridiculous amount of rating points. Here it is. Jasmine Garner last season, her rating was 47.2. The next best was Mon Conti on 35.8. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. The season before Jazz Garner was 41.5. Prior to that in season six, 2022, uh, so the early one in the year. Uh, only 34, but then she was at a 44.9 in 2020 and a 41.3 in 2021. Kiara Bowles was 40.1. This is the level that Jazz Garner has been at for five years and still hasn't won <laughs> the, the W award. Yeah, it I know. It is utterly insane. It is crazy. The best individual season of all time was last year, according to these ratings, and she hasn't won the, the award. Aaron Phillips is next best on 46.2. Yeah. Where is she this year? Uh, I've, I've, it will come out. Yeah, we'll come out. Got to wait till the end of the thing. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that... Uh, Marinoff will, will be up there. in the high 40s with yeah. Jasmine Garner there too. Yeah. Yep. Insane. Yep. Wow. Just insane. Mm-hmm. So, Jazz Garner, this is a Jazz Garner fan podcast. Yep. 
deserves an award. Ah, oh, 100%. I, I think she will take winning best on ground in the uh, grand final. And I think she'll take winning a grand final. Just winning a grand final, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Anyway, she'll I think she won't give up about flying, winning flying the W flush. Award yeah. if they make the final and win it. Exactly. And, anyway, back to the fan bases. Carlton are like, sure. They actually played a K in the first half yeah. and then the Bombers sort of put the foot down in yep. the second half. And the Bombers are like, can we win the final? <laughs> that was really good. Like, they're cautiously optimistic, but also so nervous. Oh, they're not going to win a final. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, there we go. All right, let's get that's to... in this next week's podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, coming to next Monday, a tired and angry Brani. Why do my bombers suck? <laughs> <laughs> Sunday at Moorabbin, St Kilda, 6 5 41, well beaten by the Brisbane Lions, 10 8 68. So Brisbane played two quarters of footy and kicked 10 goals. They didn't do anything in the second. And that's because there was a big, strong win. I was yes. getting there, stats guy. Sorry. Yeah. There was a <laughs> there was a big win to the right of screen if you were watching, and Brisbane were just like, yeah, it's all right. We'll play two quarters and win this game easily. Uh, with Hawthorne winning, it didn't matter anyway. But letting St Kilda pile on the goals late. Yeah, didn't they help did, their didn't they? Sorry, the win was to the left of screen. That's my yep. apologies. To the left of screen, away from the Ferris wheel. Uh, <laughs> but this was fun. It was actually really it was good. Yeah. It was high scoring. Yeah. Plenty of big hits. Yeah. Attacking footy from both teams. Yeah. Del Santos gone. Oh, let's, we're just going to. Uh, he put a few different players in the midfield. He put Anderson in the midfield, Simpson, just some younger players. Yeah. Sort of tried a few things out and they decided to play a lot more attacking. Yeah. Similar to the dog sort of flicking the switch. They, again, they needed to do this earlier in the season than they yeah. might have made finals. So I don't know. I, I did like how they actually came out and played positive footy. Brisbane as well, they have conceded more points. I, I need to double check the actual stats on it. But there's been a few games where they've conceded over 30, 40 points against some lower teams. And mm -hmm. I'm a bit worried about them in the finals compared mm. to last year. Yeah. Um, I agree with the Saints. I th I thought they sort of turned around to play some pretty attacking yeah, footy good. and yeah. was able to, to uh, score some goals. Um, had 28 inside 50s and 11 shots on goal. So, like, not great. Mm. Um, but great de um, defensive pressure as well, yep. I thought, in there. Um, Sophie Conway, Brisbane. Oh. She's having some kind of season. She will be devastated that she hurt her shoulder. Hopefully, um, it's, not, hopefully it's not too do we bad. Think it's bad. I think it's yeah, bad. I think it is. Once you get actually like where she landed yeah, in that joint, didn't that's look good. yeah, that's not that's not. I think it's the shoulder mm. version of the ACL in there. She had twenty seven to dispose of two goals. Like yeah, she was everywhere. Yeah. And then as soon as she went down, like oh, that's gonna, yeah. that could cost them like a win in finals. Yeah, and Taylor Smith getting up there, getting yes. her two goals, so equal leading goal kicker. Um. <laughs> Yeah, huge. I'm just trying to find any news and I can't find anything. About so Conway? Far. Yeah, uh, so no, it yeah. will come out in the next few days, I think. Yeah, yeah not great. Uh, Brisbane as well had their second biggest first quarter ever, 29 to 6. Did was helped with the wind. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they just did well to just hang on. I know, that, as you said, they played two good quarters. It was really tough. The wind wasn't just like going one way. It was like yeah. swirling. Some it's, of the AFLW the grounds annoy me uh, so much. Yeah, we're going to get there in like <laughs> a minute and a half. There's, yeah. there's too many grounds that are so open and there's whirl, swirling wind. And anyway. it's because you're on the beach too. On like the beach, that, yeah. You know when you go to the so beach tough. and it's just so windy. Oh. It's like that's why it's swirly at Frankston. That's why it's swirly yeah. at RSC Park as well. Yeah, uh, that just reminded me. Swans had their second highest score of all time. Oh, great. When they beat West Coast. So There you go. Uh, fan bases St Kilda are like, yeah, what? Um, sure. Oh, they had an yeah. okay season just Nah. Like 11th? Nah. Are you nah. not saying that? They, they St. Kilded it. Because they do. I don't think their list is is a finals team. No. Really? So I'm saying hey, that. Hey, we had them in finals at the start of the year. Did I? We had them eight. Oh. Well, I, I don't know if I did. Who knows? I don't even know who I was at the start of the season. <laughs> yeah. Okay? I'm a different person yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> nope, not even touching that one. <laughs> I like my job. Uh, Brisbane. And, Bri and Brisbane like sick. Double chance. We yep. know what we're doing. Yep. Please yeah. Yeah. They, they just know how to win. Please let Surf Conway be okay. Yep. Uh, further on Sunday at the Swinburne Centre, a game that should never host an AFLW game ever Whoa. again. Why? Richmond 3-5-23, Hawthorne 6-10-46. Because, Stats Guy, it's a hunk of junk. It is a <laughs> well, very, road. It's a bad fan experience. You're standing in the sun all day if you're, over, if you're over there on the hill all day. The wind is like this all the time. You see <laughs> bad football at this ground. I haven't. All of the I games not... I've watched, the, the intensity of this match was great. I think the worst football all year has been played at this ground. Really? Eh. I feel as far like, as a spectacle goes. I feel like some of the ones with the wind, I feel like the wind's worse at some of the ones near the beach rather than Punt Road. But I know, yeah, I don't think the wind's too bad. I know what you're Punt saying. I, I'm, I'm banning right. Punt Road. It's just, I don't oh, think it, I don't, Okay, you've really taken it to another level. We're well, not banning it. I'm just, next year, I'm like, let's, let's go somewhere else. 
They're never I think ever it's going great... Even if Punt Road somehow fell apart and was burned down, they are still playing there. That is, <laughs> that is the home of the Tigers, mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because North Melbourne are playing at their home ground this weekend. What? Well, finals are different. Finals are different. No. Nah, no. Nah, I'm, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving these games away from, from Punt Road. I'm, <laughs> I'm sick of it. Okay. Well, because it's so it's it is so open to the elements. You've got the little stand, but behind you've got we've got the MCG over there. But it's you've got all the wind coming down from the city towards it, and it just creates this big cross section of a breeze that you never know if it's just build another stand. Build another stand. Oh yeah, where are they going to fit it? Stats. Uh, I, I don't they know. don't have. I know punt road over past. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You just have to cross a bridge and then they've you're there. Got, they've got a temporary shed as the away changing room. That's as not well. great. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. That's yeah. not good. Enough. And the screen sucks. Yeah, the screen does suck. But if you go into the footy to watch a screen, and the like, chips just aren't go great. stay home, mate. Stay home. <laughs> yeah, watch it. Yeah, exactly. I no, I saw like on. Yesterday as well, I was watching it. Yeah, the intensity is great, but this is just a bit, mm. yeah. And a lot of fans, like Richmond Hall fans, like, yeah, we left at halftime because it, it's a terrible place to watch. That's halftime. Okay. They played all right. No, no, it wasn't because of the because of how the, the fan t- experience. The fan okay. experience. Was I will bad. say the sausage sizzle there, pretty good. Oh. Because you can't, yeah, you can't sit in the stand. Remember when we were there, you can't yeah. sit in the stand. There's, Everyone's over on the hill. It's like the media part. Well, yeah. That is weird. I'll give you that. I'll give you that part. Yeah, they got to let people go up and fill the stand. Yeah, like, because yeah. you've got the little uh, family and friends box, which is right in front of where the sort of the changing yeah. thing yeah, is. Yeah, then yeah. you've got their big performance center, and then it's just the hill. Yeah. It's not even a hill. A grassy knoll. <laughs> let's talk about the let's game. Go, let's get into the game. Uh, Come on. Greta Bodie. <laughs> awesome. Had an absolute ripper of a game. She's going to be absolutely instrumental yep. in Hawthorne's final campaign if she can stay injury Free. She's been in and out all season. Yeah. Yep. Um, she had 13 possessions in the last quarter. Yeah. yeah. 23. 13. To, that's unbelievable. 13 possessions. <laughs> there we go. We had the uh, the Irish uh, actually comes out, I reckon, every time. So. Yeah. She had uh, six marks as well. Yeah. One was a uh, back with the flight one, really cool. Could have died. Yeah. Could have yeah. died. Could have died. Could have died. Yeah. And, but, Eliza West is amazing too. Yeah. Jazz Fleming. Um, Caitlin Ashmore. Oh. Batesy had a quiet game. Yeah. But Batesy. They didn't really need her. But that's um, all right. It shows I think that... she had thir- – I've only written one disposal there. No, it, I think she had like 13. But it, yeah. shows, but it shows that they don't need her every mm-hmm. week. For yeah. Women. That's, yeah. That's where they are. Like obviously finishing second. Last year they would have gone, we need 30 from you every week. Otherwise yeah. we're cooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they were really good. Mon Conti had moments where she was like, oh, I'm just going to win this myself. Yep. And but In the mo- most Mon yeah. Conti way that you possibly can. Yeah. yeah. Conti and Egan, though, they, yeah. I think they only had five clearances between them, which obviously isn't that bad, mm. but compared to their high standard, especially Conti's yeah. usually close to that eight to ten yeah. mark, yeah. they actually did really well to stop really With, dominating. Yeah, They've showed their best Richmond when they were changing angles when they were going into the forward line. Like they'd come through the middle, then they cut out to a flank and then go back in through the middle that way because Hawthorne are very good just like railway road runners, just mm. that yeah, straight, straight line, out running, middle. Which yeah. is what we love to which watch. They, yeah. But they cut them open doing that. But then their delivery to the Ford 50 was okay but the small forwards like Yasir and co weren't getting to the foot of Katie Brennan. A couple of times she planted her feet. It was like, oh, I'm just going to have to try and take this one out. Yeah. And you had two Hawthorne defenders converging on it. It's just yeah. their forward entry let them down all day, Richmond. Yeah. And that was their biggest problem. Yeah. But Hawthorne in the end run out, run out probably deserved winners, but it's a game Richmond can, will look back on going, we probably could have won that. I yeah, know, you can tell it was like a finals matchup. They've literally yeah. had half the scoring shots, but watching it, that that scoreline doesn't Yeah, Richmond tell the only had 10, 10 shots on goal. Yeah. Hawthorne, yeah. we talk about their offense, but they're really good defensively. Uh, yeah. Like when they, yeah. when they want to be sort of, they sometimes play a bit too attacking, like they finish second, so it works. Yeah. But in the finals, they might have to play a bit more like this, a bit more defensive, only let their opposition. Use your words, stats, Opposition man. have uh, near, not many scoring shots, but yeah. yeah. But it was awesome. Yeah, it was really good to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, fan bases, Hawthorne are like, we can do this. A million bucks in the in the bank. Is a million bucks. That's pretty so good. So it's two fifty to the women's, two fifty to the men's, and then five hundred to the club. I think yes, is how yes. they split it. That that is awesome. Yeah, that, like gives you a lot of motivation to, to get more wins on the board. Do the men need the money? That's a good point. Well, I, I don't think it's like whether you need the money. Yeah, I it's, think it's, it's just, just yeah, a, it hey, you've, here's here's how wealthy you've you. done. Yeah, yeah okay, All right, I'm on board. Uh, and Richmond. Hmm. Mm. They'll, That's literally like, the yeah. They won't be as conf- after this one. They won't be as confident that they can like have a few upset wins in the finals. I think. I think they're on the lower end of the finals, uh, compared, yeah. like with Essendon and yep. things like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is sad because I think their team depth. Should Who be are they playing? Better. Port Adelaide. Yeah. That'll be a good game. That though. is going to be a really yeah. good game. Mm. I mean, they're all going to be really yeah, good games. Finals. Yeah. Uh, all right. yeah, it's, it's, it's finals. finals. Yeah, oh, shut up, yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get across to Albertson Park where... <coughs> oh, what a game. Miracle on grass? Yeah. The Gemma Houghton moment. Oh. Port, Yard to Pulte, Port Adelaide, 7-143, defeated GWS, 6-6-42. <clears throat> now, before we get into this, 
Schultz and Abby Dowry, 20 minutes before the game, like, nah, we're taking an RDO, guys. We're yeah, why were they in late? Just laid out. Just management. Because I think with the way that the Richmond and uh with uh, the way that the Richmond and Hawthorne game had gone, I think they were getting a home final. The way the ladder oh. had gone. So is that like, oh, yeah, you're, you're right. It's and then all... they underestimated GWS a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but I, let's hold on. Let me just quickly check. Because if they lost, would it have mattered? If they if they lost, they would have uh, not gotten a home final. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, did, they still had to win. Okay. So I don't know. Ma- maybe they had a few little niggles. Yeah. And they're like, we don't yeah, want to risk right. our two best players. Yeah. GWS. Wow. Yeah. They only got over the line by a point, so that's a bit risky. Yeah. Oh, that is very risky. So shout out to Simon uh, Simon Willocks on Twitter who tagged me in this. Um, so basically, I'm going to send this to Gerald so he can post this up now. Uh, you'll see it on screen, but for those who are not watching, Port men slash women when playing in their away Indigenous uh, Guernsey, Shack asleep, easy big win. Port men, women were playing in their home indigenous jersey. Clutch one point win from behind with Shaq with like lasers coming out of his eyes. <laughs> I think it must have been that Hawthorne game where they wore their indigenous Guernsey, where they kicked those two goals That's in the last right, 16 yeah. seconds. So, in their indigenous so jerseys, Port this- fans are like, they see that home indigenous Guernsey, they're like, oh, this is going to be just torture to watch, but we're going to win. <laughs> yeah, they're going to win. They're going to win. They- Gemma Howard. Gerald, it's in the WhatsApp group. Did not <laughs> really get a possession no. all game. All, it wasn't that, like herself at all. And this game was just like kicking from 50 to 50. Mm. It's just like no one had great penetration into their forward 50. Yeah. And it just kept going up and back and up and back. I'm like, where is Gemma? Get the ball, <laughs> get the to, ball her. to her. She couldn't get near it. And then one minute to go mm. takes a – I knew she was going to take awesome it. Mark. Yeah. I knew she was going to take it. As soon as I saw her coming to screen, I was like, yeah, with the delivery from Lammy yes. on the centre where she's just like burst Kirstie through. Kirstie Lamb got a goal before that as yeah. well. Like that last like five minutes from Lamb was awesome. Yeah. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Houghton's there and I was like, that, this is it. She's going to kick it. She's going to absolutely kick it. This is going to be amazing. They're up by a point. I was screaming at the TV. Just just look at the photo. You can't see stuff if on your screen. you can screen. see the screen, just Stop Sorry, Gerald. Stop just, Stop. just go to the yeah. AFL match report. It's like, look at me. Get around me. It was She's really awesome. good. Went to the crowd. You also, know what I mean? Had the short sleeves on. Yeah, good on her. Yeah. <laughs> good on her. Usual. Get the guns out. Yeah. Get the guns out. Yeah, she's got guns, doesn't she? Yeah. Don't want to mess with Gemma Houghton. Yeah, you probably don't. No. The other thing about Port, they kicked seven one. If they didn't kick straight, they would have been cooked. They would have been GW, cooked. GWS played so well. I this had, was their best performance of the year. GWS was awesome. Yeah, they averaged agreed. seventy tackles a game per year, which is like pretty. It's okay. It's good. Then they won the count one hundred and six to eighty yesterday. As you said, it was very between the arcs. This oh game, just God. like kick back, kick back, kick like, back, kick somebody back. Somebody do something. <laughs> so it was a bit like that. But you had Beeson and Parker mm. after playing really well, and O'Dowd. She got back to her best form. Just yeah. going, I am the hybrid unicorn ruckman, ruck person, ruck woman. Yeah. What do I call ruck, it? Ruck, ruck purse. Just ruck. I just say ruck. Ruck. Yeah. And make it easy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. And then, hey, you know what was a novel idea that I yelled about last week? Get Zali near the footy. Yeah, 16, played, played midfield, yeah. 16 possessions in a goal. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, Great, well great idea, Cam. Good they'll, process. They'll be mad they didn't win this because they yeah. played oh, they played so they well. They played yeah. really, really yeah. well. They, they'll be devoed that they let that they're, slip. They're better. They lost their last eight games of the season, but yeah. they seem like a better team than that. They were it's, really it's weird. Yeah. Once they Tough fixture, but once they had that um that sort of first half against Hawthorne, I mm. thought, in these last sort of three or four games, yeah. they've been really, really good. They are very young, so maybe they'll just build a bit more confidence. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. couple more, again, draft picks, more having that same core in at the club. Hopefully yeah. they can hold on to their players as we talked about last week yeah. with the condition, like not conditions, but how hard it is to rent in Sydney. Yeah. Um. Hopefully they, well, the CBA goes up next year, so yeah. hopefully it helps. Yeah. Fan bases, uh, Porter just like, whoo! Home, yes. home final, awesome. and what a way win. to what a way to go! The into crowd finals. sounded awesome. Yeah, there too. They did. it was it was uh, well, selling out four thousand. Yeah. Crowd, yeah. Awesome the, crowd. The camera angle still weird, still annoys me. But hey, okay. Gemma Holland is just like yeah, I'm yeah. Her. yeah, yeah, yeah. I am her, and GW, <laughs> I am her, <laughs> and GWS like cool, mm. cool. Well, cool, 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 they cool, played cool. well. Yeah, they'll just be sad yeah. that they lost eight. Final game of the weekend, uh, Fremantle. While you're up, uh, four eleven thirty five defeated the Western Bulldogs three three twenty one. Not the greatest way to win the home and away season, let's be honest. It wasn't much of a spectacle. No. Mm. Frio dominated the footy and the dogs just sort of sat back and were just trying to repel attack at all costs. Yeah. But this feels like a very Frio home game. It's just gross and you're like, ah, Frio won. I'm, I'm, I want to go back through it maybe for the next one. I reckon they've got exactly 35 points, like 
so many times. They just feel like. Oh, do you reckon? Like I, I don't know why. It just feels like they can't. But like I could be, I could be way off. They might not even. Be it feels like it just feels like around that. I'll say temperature, around that but feels like. <laughs> yeah, it feels like just outside. The, Filter, Fremantle, keep going. No, I, I could have just said that out of pocket. Now I'm gonna yeah, look at all fine. the stats, but around that 35 mark, that's they're not gonna make any waves in finals yeah. if they can't get past 40, 45 points. They yeah. always get around that 35. They had four goals, 11 yesterday, 40 into 50 to 16, mm -hmm. and only got 35 points. So that was disappointing. I Four mean, goals, eleven is not no, is not right. No, they they yeah. need to just kick a bit more accurately. Their midfielders has been kicking goals uh, and things like that. But yeah, I'm a little bit worried about Freo heading into the finals. Freo scores this year: sixty four, six. <laughs> you don't 30, have to read them all. 37, 47, 25, 45, 25, 30. 35, 55, Oh, there 35. we go. There's a lot of fives in there. So <laughs> one, their last, hey, their last is, three games they've had a like it's it's something five. Oh, that's not what I mean. All I'm saying is around that 35 mark. They need to go to that next level to win, win, win a final. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mimstrom is the All Australian ruck. Oh, I'm going to talk about it later for best uh, of the uh, player of the week. Yeah. Do you awesome. know she didn't win the hitouts? <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Oh. 33 to 44 Bulldogs. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Weird. I Weird. reckon a few of the hit outs from uh, yeah, the other team, though, she was just like, I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Watching that game is like, yeah, Mimstrom has killed it and is pro <laughs> Probably I, getting all the votes. Yeah, I think I think we're looking at Mimstrom for all Australian. Alice yeah. Edwards had 34 right. hitouts to 29, but Mimstrom 30 disposals, uh, 17 kicks, nine marks, seven tackles, seven clearances, Ooh. three behinds, and 166 fantasy points. Clearly yeah. the best player. Not on bad the ground. at all. Like, yeah. A long, a long she way. She did very, very well, old Mimsy. Fan bases, free like home final. We should win. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think they'll be. Super, super, super confident because they, they don't know how to kick a yeah. big enough score, but yeah, they should win. Yeah, uh, and the dogs are just like, yeah, good. Sometimes horrendous. But I got overall, dogs fans in my family. Overall, pretty happy. Positive season, yeah. winning four games, up mm. to twelve. They was did it, it yeah. without Ellie Blackburn. Yeah, who's their best player? Yeah, I think I think it just gave them. Uh, like other options to go to. We see that sometimes where yeah. your top player goes out and other people have to step up. True. And if they weren't given that opportunity, they wouldn't know what they're capable of. Mm. And I think once you sort of show people what they can do. Um, Everyone gets a bit more confidence. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's a shame that that had to happen to Ali in order for that to happen. But, um, yeah, I think they'll walk away uh, with some good reflections. Same, some similar to dogs. West Coast where they're like, all right, we've 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 taken that next step. Now we just need to yeah, get a yeah. few more wins on the board. Look at what we did good. Look yeah. at what we didn't do good. And then, you know, make those make those changes and just, yeah, more more games into your players. Yep. Tipping results for the weekend. Me and Spence lead the way on eight. Bryony and Stats Guy on seven. So oh. that means overall. We both we drew. Bryony and Stats Guy draw on 71. So you know what? I'll take that. Yeah. Woo. What do we win? No, we're rolling this into finals. Oh, actually, uh, can't go with the wait, draw. Is that because you're like, how far behind are you? Spence is third on 69, mm -hmm. and I am I'm last on 68. So there's three tips separating. That is the Sydney Swans letting me down. I've never been in a tipping comp that uh, goes towards finals. So this is uh, this is a rot. I'm done. I'm, I've, we've already won in my eyes. Yeah. I'll no, take you're it. You're both losers. Yeah, you want to, yeah, you want the win. It. Yeah, yeah. See, it. Four. I knew you'd want this. You'd be like, yeah. I'm Maybe gonna... I'm worried. I think my form's dropped off in the yeah. team. So I'm... that's it. So we're we're taking this into finals. All so right, this fine. is yeah. We're, we're only at the halfway point. Because finals are harder to tip, right? Yeah. True. There's nine True. games to go. Yeah, but I, I, so I just don't want him to win. Like that. I'm not gonna. I'm, <laughs> there's nine games to go, and I'm three behind. I have to tip perfectly. Actually, you're not good at tipping anyway, so you won't win. Yeah. Who, who was the only one that went perfect in the first week of finals in the men's finals last year? How this could guy. I remember that? Who is the only person who would actually remember that? Exactly. This guy. I, yeah. uh, full credit. The best team of the round. Let is, let's roll through this. Who was the best team that we saw during the weekend? I want to say Port Adelaide. Yeah, they weren't. No, I'm not saying that they were the best <laughs> okay. team of the round. Well, that's I'm what just the question. <laughs> No. Go on, go on. You've probably got a good explanation. Because they were able to, they were able to pull it out. True. They weren't leading the, the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. weren't leading the whole game, yep. and then to come back and find exactly what they needed in order to get themselves across the line. That takes guts yep. from a team. It takes belief. Um, and I'm going to say that they were the best team in the round. Stats man, bombers. I can't believe I'm saying that. I, I know it was against Carlton, but there was a lot of pressure. Yeah. Obviously, Bonnie Tuga, they one of their best players, went down. Yeah. They just dominated. They kicked 60 points. They've gotten confidence towards finals. I'm just saying, I thought they could have lost because they've had so many up and down moments. They said to everyone, we got this, and they played a really confident game and won against Carlton. I mm. was going to say the Bombers as well, but Stats Guys beat me to it. Look at you ah. two go. I said, bombers. What? I said, Bombers. <laughs> yes. Bombers. Gerald, you have their mind, please. Uh, I, I can't say Nam because they beat the bottom team. North Melbourne won. So you know what? Second highest score ever. You know it. 
My boys, my team, my gals, the Swans. Your boys. Yeah. My boys. <laughs> Your girls, Not my yeah. boys. My, my girls. boys, my gals, my everything, the Sydney Swans. Fair we enough. welcome everyone in Sydney. Only men's team with one with St Kilda to play a Pride game. So we welcome everyone in. All right. Well, all right. well said. Uh, best player, I'm just going to roll on for that. Bella Smith kicks five. You kick five, you're probably going to get best player as far, as far as I'm concerned in yep. the AFLW. Anyone kicks five, they're the best player of the weekend. Yes, mm. also Mimstrom. Yeah, Fair. I'm going Mimstrom. Yep. 30 disposals, 20 I contested. I you guys were going to say Mimstroms. I was like, I can't make it the three-way okay. Mim. Awesome. The Mim event. Just an extra midfielder, hybrid, awesome. All right, that is us done and dusted for AFLW today. Well, for today, we're going to be back Wednesday because... Well, we're going to be dead on Thursday because fashion's on the field. Host, the big dog. I'm <laughs> big Mel- dog, the oh, big oh, dude. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I'm, I'm Melbourne cupping uh, on Thursday. Cupping. You're getting that's your sounds, cupping done, That sounds mate. weird. I don't I'm know. A, I tell you what, my back is cooked. I do need it with all and this And there's another episode where Alex talks about his back, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm carrying this team. That's oh, why the back that is outrageous. <laughs> And Thursday's Oaks Day, so there's so much going on. So we'll be back Wednesday to preview all of the finals, all four of them. So hopefully the show doesn't go super long. Big thanks to our new best friend, Ian Hatchard, for joining the show today. That was absolutely awesome. Thank you, Bronny. And thanks to our intern, Geordie, for jumping on for yes. her first interview, Van Hatchard. Good call. I thought I wasn't allowed to give the intern credit. I thought that was the rules. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, we can. We've got to More be nice credit. to interns now. We love Geordie. <laughs> now. Credit More. to the turns. <laughs> credit to the turns. Geordie has Geordie actually has been killing it behind the scenes with the work helping out Brian this season. Shout out to the stats man as well. Thank you. You've been killing it this season too. Going and off. Geraldo and Spence, of course, behind the screen. Wouldn't be anything without the people behind the screen. And you, you do a lot of work behind the scenes. I'm oh, giving thanks, you credit, mate. stats guy. That's nice. Oh, that's now, nice. Remember, hey. smash Wait, like. remember the date and time <laughs> yeah, of now yeah, and the 4th down. of I'm November keep this recording and watch it every 10, night. 26 a.m. <laughs> so you know, Alex paced that guy Just a so you compliment. know, Karen and Mark McCallion, I am nice to Liam. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. See, sometimes. I called him Liam. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Now, remember to smash a like across all the social medias. We've got a bunch of content still to come out throughout the off-season as well because we haven't really thrown you everything from our content day with ASICs. Now, of course, the YouTube, make sure you subscribe to that so everything comes out to you throughout the season. AFL today, cricket today, football today. NBA Australia, NFL Australia, hold all tickets. It is literally our busiest week of the year because there is literally cricket on this afternoon, 500 metres away. Let's go. So check out the Cricket Today social. Stats guy is going to make a lot of people mad. There's a funny costume uh, that Marcus is going to dress up in, which I don't even know if I want to be involved with Marcus. Marcus is likely to get you guys cancelled. That's why he's never (laughs) been on this show. No, never. We'll catch you later in this week for more AFLW Today. Till then, look after yourselves and remember... Burning back!